Well, good morning, everyone. First of all, let's give Dave a round of applause for putting this conference together. A little more than a year ago, we saw each other at a conference, and Dave says to me, I put together a green infrastructure conference, and it's going to be in Detroit. And are you willing to participate? Are you going to help? And I said, of course, why not? So today I want to talk to you a little bit about what I call raindrops and reinvent. Detroit has an unprecedented opportunity to reinvent itself by using stormwater in a completely different way. So these are all symbols of Detroit. How many of you saw the Super Bowl a few years ago when Chrysler made it sexy to be from Detroit and told everybody we're imported from Detroit? Many of you have seen 8 Mile, the story of Eminem. And 8 Mile has a lot of significance in Detroit. It is the it is the road that actually um, separates Detroit from the suburbs. It has a lot of historical significance in Detroit. Detroit is the city that put the Motown sound in everybody's home, right? We changed the way people listen to music. And if you see nothing else, you see the D, right? And so now we're referred to a lot of times as the D, and everybody recognizes that old English D. But if there's nothing more important about Detroit and Detroiters is that we have a grind. It is built in us. We hustle harder than everybody else. And so Detroit is versus everybody. The gentleman that came up with this slogan, right, embodies everything that is important about Detroit. The ingenuity, the passion, the commitment to the city. This man trademarked versus everybody. He now has a million dollar, a multi-million dollar deal with colleges doing athletic apparel, right? Because everybody caught on to this slogan. So the thing about Detroit is we don't stop, we grind harder, we hustle harder. And so that, that, that strength and that commitment is what is going to allow us to reinvent ourselves with green infrastructure. So Detroit is 139 square miles, right? You can fit Boston, San Francisco, and Manhattan inside of Detroit and still have plenty of room left over. Those cities have populations total more than 3 million, right? And they still only make up 120 square miles. Detroit has a population of slightly under 700,000. So we have tons of opportunity. The uh, border that just appeared is the area on the west side that we're concentrating on to implement green infrastructure. And the area in the and on the east side is another area that's coming into focus. So red here really are the properties that are in good ownership, right, that are stable. Green represents everything that is in the public domain, right? Some of it is vacant land, some of it is parks, some of it is schools. But it tells a story about why Detroit is so different than other communities. And so the red, right, low vacancy area, green is a high vacancy area. So unlike a lot of other urban environments, we've invested more than a billion and a half dollars in wet weather treatment facilities. I'm beginning to change saying combined sewer overflow because people really don't know what that means. You got to go through a lot of, you know, explanation to explain that. But if I say wet weather treatment, people understand that weather happens and we're gonna treat that wet weather. We have nine facilities uh, in the city of Detroit that actually help us manage wet weather. So, unlike a lot of urban cities, that one and a half billion dollar investment has yielded us tremendous benefit. We've reduced the number of untreated sewage discharges, you know, from the point where we were discharging 20 to 30 billion gallons a year, and now we discharge less than a billion gallons per year in untreated discharges. That's phenomenal, just using gray infrastructure. But we also have the opportunity to do something different because we have a lot of land, right? This is a project that was going to be a $40 million big dumb gray tank, right? That's what I call it. If you have a CSO facility or wet weather treatment facility next to your house, it, it does absolutely nothing for your property value. However, this, this became a $25 million stormwater project 
save the city money, and actually spurred more than $400 million of economic activity around it. People don't know that this park is managing stormwater. If you have the opportunity to go to Atlanta, you should go see this park. It is amazing to see what the ingenuity and creativity of landscape architects, civil engineers, and those committed to making something different created in Atlanta. In 2013, through negotiations with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, we were allowed to implement green infrastructure into our CSO control program. That was a huge step uh, for Detroit. And so on the west side of the city, we're investing $50 million, and we have a goal to remove 2.8 million gallons of stormwater from the system for the two-year event, which is 2.34 inches of rain. Most people design green infrastructure for the 90th percentile event, which is a little bit more than an inch. So we have to do things a little bit harder here, right? We have to go a little bit further than a lot of people do in other cities. And so we have a lot of different activities we're doing, downspout disconnection, bioretention, transportation corridor projects, and the like. And we submit an annual plan to document our progress. So what have we done, right? The demolition program in Detroit has completely changed another way that we do stormwater management. More than 3,000 acres of impervious area has been removed by pulling up rooftops and driveways. The city is well on its way to demolishing more than 15,000 structures. That is unprecedented for a city to be able to demolish that number of structures since 2014. In addition, we have very great projects that our private partners have done, like General Motors and Chrysler. You will hear about General Motors uh, project if you go to their presentation. They're managing 630 acres. We have different development uh, projects in the queue, that's 80 acres, and the projects that we've implemented make up 20 acres. And so through all of these different efforts, more than three billion gallons of stormwater is being managed, right? That's the size of an event sometimes that could have discharged in the past. Um, Viola Luizo, how many people know who Viola Luizo is? Okay, so half and half. This woman lost her life so that I would have the opportunity to vote, to have choice, to elect who my president is, right? She was a native Detroiter that went to Selma, Alabama and was killed by the Ku Klux Klan during the 1965 March on Selma. Artis Johnson. Artis Johnson embodies everything that it means to be a Detroiter. When people in the government and the city weren't there to mow the grass at the park that he lived next to, this man cut the grass himself every day for two years. And this man, you know, he looks good for his age, but I'm sure he is well over 70, right? He embodies what Detroiters do every single day, the people we never hear about, and that's Artis Johnson. And so what I wanna show you is a park, right? It's called a playground, and literally, it's a playground. There was no equipment there, just two blocks of grass. And is this the type of place that you want to honor a civil rights icon? No. You want to honor a civil rights icon in something that's befitting of the legacy um, that they left. And so we, in partner, DWSD in partnership with the city of Detroit, has invested more than a million dollars in revitalizing this park and committing to this community. And so this is what green infrastructure is about. If you haven't been doing green infrastructure in your cities or you're just getting started, it's about that commitment and that collaboration and that partnership between the community um, and the city and philanthropic agencies. And so this project showcases and highlights what happens when the community comes together and takes a stake in its neighborhood and the city can meet them there and the community can benefit from it. One of the things that we're trying to do in Detroit is manage stormwater in a different way. Detroit plans to be a leader in green infrastructure and stormwater management. We want to make use of the thing that we have that a lot of cities don't have, land. The importance of green infrastructure, um, particularly in the city of Detroit, is what it can do to a neighborhood. Because 
It can provide a revitalization benefit to the community and it really can bring the neighborhood together and be meaningful to the people who live there. And now today, uh, we're announcing a million dollar investment in the park in this neighborhood. Right? You have bioretention areas that go in that look a little bit more manicured, that look more like gardens. They require more work. And so if you can have uh, neighborhood groups that are involved with this, that, are, that want to make it look nice, that they, they have vested interest in the park, it, there's a lot more likelihood for success. I want to do everything in my power by living in this neighborhood to make sure that this park here be dedicated to her family to let them know their mom didn't just die in vain that she will always be living in this park right here and we want that to be the most beautiful thing that they can receive from their mom death. It's really about really restoring Detroit and people's faith that good things can happen. I mean, it, it's bigger than the park, it's really bigger than Detroit. So this park will be more than just a play state. There will be three bioretention areas in this park. So it's a really smart um, and innovative idea that's new to the city of Detroit and I'm glad to hear that they're going to incorporate that throughout the city. So I think it matches well to some of the preservation thoughts that my grandmother would have wanted with parks all over the country. And I hope you come the next time because we hope the next time you won't know this place. Thank you. So, with that, I conclude my presentation. We welcome you to Detroit. We hope you learn more about the city than you see in national media and on the headlines. We've erupted from bankruptcy. We have the opportunity to change the way people feel about where they live, for people to participate in the process of where they live, for people to be engaged. And so we welcome you, thank you for coming, and let's have a great conference.